that God give us life. It give us understanding unto the same thing. Only the word of God can change your world. As you listen to this broadcast by Christian Information Network Ministry, your world shall shout. to Jesus, the risen king, the reason for the season, I will continue to exalt his name. Once again, I want to welcome everyone to today's service, um, the first Sunday in the month. I want to thank you once again for being part of the 38th anniversary. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for participating. Thank you for those that you invited to come. Thank you for be being part of history. And I want to ask, um, trust God that if Jesus tarries, we shall celebrate next year together. In the name of Jesus. I just want to ask from you. Let us be more committed. Let's rally around ourselves. Let's attend church regularly. Let's invite people to church. It is our church. It's a family. And let's be concerned with the welfare of one another. When something is going on in the church or around you, let us know. That's why we have our teams. If you notice anything in the life of anybody or in a family, report to your team leader. And of course, it will be able to get to the office. And where we need to act, we'll be able to act accordingly. The Lord will help us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Lest I forget, please, each team leader, maybe by next week when you are meeting, I want to know what everybody is doing. Those that are of a work, I mean, what do you call it? A working uh, status. We, we, uh, we want to know what is everyone doing. We want to be sure that everybody has a job or everybody has a treat. Hallelujah. So when we know where help is needed, we'll be able to know what to do. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. It's another month that you have given to us. Three months gone already. Thank you so much, Lord. Because even this week is the beginning of what the church calendar knows as Passion Week. And Lord, by next Sunday, we'll be having the Easter celebration. We thank you so much, Lord, for helping us thus far. Lord, I pray that as we look into your word again this morning, you will bless our hearts. Let your word bring lifting to our lives. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God bless you. Let's be seated. Matthew chapter 21. You can read from verses 1 to 11. But I want to read from verse 6. Matthew chapter 21 from verse 6. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the house and the colt and put on them their clothes and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut them branches from the trees and strode them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed Christ, saying, Hosanna! To the son of David. <clears throat> Blessed is he that cometh. In the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> and when he was come into Jerusalem. All the city was moved. Saying. 
who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. And Jesus went to the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the table of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves. Sold doves. And said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of tips. I had it to extra verses. Praise the Lord. I am speaking on the triumphant king. The triumphant king. But before I go on, I want to remind you <clears throat> that whatever Jesus is, is what the church is expected to be. All that Jesus did for us, <clears throat> all the life that he lived, we are to learn from these lives and be able to live such lives on earth. My children, children over there, listen attentively. Everybody is expected to learn from Jesus. The hallmark of Christianity is to be like Jesus. Now, what we are doing this week is that today begins what is known in Christian calendar as the Passion Week. Jesus, in fulfillment of prophecy, rode on an ass to Jerusalem. Because it has been prophesied that Jesus is going to ride on an ass. And that's why from verse 1, the Bible says he sent his disciples. So go to the village ahead of you. You will see an horse that is tied. Bring it. If anybody asks you, why are you losing the horse? Tell the person, the Lord is in need of it. You see, there are so many lessons we have to learn from the life of Jesus. He gave that instruction because it has been prophesied. In Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. He says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. <clears throat> Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass. And upon a colt, the fall of an ass. Hallelujah. Now, because it has been spoken concerning the Messiah, that the Messiah, when he comes, you rejoice, shout. So you can see that when Jesus now eventually rode an ass and people were shouting, Hosanna, it has been written. And it came to pass. Everything that God has written concerning your life shall come to pass. It took, I mean, it, I mean, for someone to have an ass in those days, he must be a rich man. He never rode an ass. He came from a poor background. Or rather, he became poor so that we can be rich. But because of prophecy, he rode on us. Now, I'm called talking about the triumphant king. Triumphant king. Now, Jesus is fulfilling the prophecy to ride and ask to Jerusalem. On that day, why some celebrated his entry as a king and prophet? Some Pharisees queried his royal and triumphant entry. In another gospel, you know, when he said, Oh, Santa, they said, Keep your mouth shut. Can't you hear these ones? 
shouting Hosanna before you. And Jesus said, if they keep quiet, I will raise stones. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because it is written, his entry to Jerusalem must be heralded with a shout. And so nobody can change that. Nobody can change that. So if you try to do that, I will raise stones to do the same. Hallelujah. It is a triumphant entry. And when we talk about something, when you talk about triumphant, a triumphant person is someone who has conquered. It's a person who has the victory. Now you can see Jesus Christ, he has not died, but is the beginning of the Passion Week, all right, that led to his arrest, eventually crucified, hallelujah, but we said he entered into Jerusalem triumphantly as a victor, as someone who has conquered. Praise God. There are a lot of things ahead of him, but he was not coming timidly. He came like a champion. He came as a conqueror. He came as someone who has won the victory. And when he entered into the city of Jerusalem, the Bible says they were shouting, Hosanna. And they said, who is this? Hallelujah. They said, that is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. Hallelujah. There is nothing you call Jesus that is not. He is a, pro he's a prophet. He is a shepherd of our soul. He is our great apostle. They call him teacher. <laughs> of course, he's an evangelist. Whatever you are looking for in the fivefold ministry is complete in Jesus. And so when he entered, they say he's a prophet from Nazareth. Hallelujah. You see, there are a lot of things loaded for prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. There are so many things that I can bring out there. You remember the other time when Philip invited Nathanael and said, we have found him. Jesus of Nazareth. The one that was spoken about by the prophets. You know, Jesus of Nazareth. As a prophet. As a priest. And Nathanael has a question that day. He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can you imagine that no good thing has ever gone out, out of Nazareth? And everybody knew that no good thing has come out of Nazareth. No champion has come out of Nazareth. No lifted person from Nazareth. I don't know whether somebody is looking at your life and they feel that can anything come good come out of your life? I love the answer of Philip. He said, come and what? And see. Very soon. Very soon. As people came out to see Jesus, people will come out and see you. In a new light, in a new glory, they will come and see you. He said, come and see. And when, G when as that Nathaniel was go coming out to come and see, he was, just, he was just coming. He has not got to Jesus. And Jesus saw him coming. Jesus said, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel said, How do you know? How do you know about me? How can you say about me, you have never seen me before. And Jesus said, Before Philip called you under that tree, I have seen you. And Nathanael said, You are the king, you are the prophet, you are the Lord. And Jesus said, Do you, be you believe this? Because I told you this, say you are going to see greater things. Hallelujah. Now, you see, from now on, don't argue with your distractors, don't argue with your persecutors. 
don't argue you know when the evidence comes every insult will be cancelled when resort begin to be made manifest everybody will confess that jesus is lord over your life now you see jesus came in triumphantly another thing you see from that story he went straight to the temple he began to cast out cleaning the temple cast out those who are buying who are selling by that time they have turned don't forget that for 400 years from malachi to matthew it is 400 years of silence there was no thoughts here the lord there was no prophet now a prophet has come <laughs> amen and so the temple has been turned to all sorts the priests cannot control them because they have compromised is nobody hearing me you know i always tell you that there is nothing you see in our day that has not happened before the priest then also they have taken bribe jesus said it something they should not ask they have asked for it they have taken the wrong thing for sacrifice so that they will have food so that they will have meat they so that they will be able to have money they have been merchandise of the people the same thing is happening today you know that people are mixed merchandise of people something that they are not supposed to do or to collect a lost source of things happening among pastors among priests among shepherds whatever they call their names hallelujah it has happened but let me tell you jesus christ came into that temple to clean the temple jesus is this coming to his church he will clean his church the church shall be cleansed once again in the name of jesus christ things shall be sorted out all this pollution the law will sanctify his church because he has said he will build his church he will build his people and the gate of hell shall not prevail over them and that's why you must get yourself prepared a move of god is coming a move is coming a move is coming it has been prophesied in the book of Joel. In chapter 2 of Joel, he said a people, a people strong and mighty. Hallelujah. He said they are the army. They are like locusts in their, you know, in their movement. They are swift in their movement. So many things is told, you know, about the army of the church of God. In this end time, God is raising an army. God is raising people that will represent him. That will fight the last battle. Battle against ungodliness. Battle against iniquity. Battle against witches and wizards. All the forces of darkness. Now it is our responsibility to be enlisted in this army of the Lord. Shout amen. amen. You must not sit on the fence. Because it is the last days. Perilous times has come. Things are happening everywhere. You see, if you read the Bible, you will discover that the prophecy is fulfilled. Hello? I saw one of our two sisters posting about what is going on in Israel. That they, uh, the, 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 I mean, the Israel government in their, in their House of Assembly or National Assembly, they want to legislate that people should not convert anybody to Christianity. If you preach to anybody to be converted to a Christian, you go to jail. One year jail term. If it is a minor, that is a young person, a, a, a teenager. If you convert a teenager to become a Christian, you go to two year jail term. Praise God. In Israel, but the president of that country, hallelujah, Benjamin Netanyahu, he refused, you know, he's standing against the bill because he's a friend to America. And because America has a lot of evangelicals, praise God. So he's not supporting that bill. And they are still think, talking about that bill. But let me tell you, if Benjamin Netanyahu does not support it now, it is because it is not yet the our, our time. Because prophetically, was a president of Israel will still support it. It is time of the church persecution. Because it is a prophecy. That in the last day, see the church will be persecuted. All that you are seeing in our country is it just is in line with the scriptures. This time around, bread and butter Christianity cannot help anybody. Hello? They did not visit me. 
I will not go to that church again. Eh, why don't you come to church? Eh, because I don't have money for transportation. Don't you have leg? Have you not read in history that our fathers trek from Akure to Bini? Hello? Eh, Damilo, you have not read it. <laughs> that they trek. There was no transport, no bicycle, no car. So when God created man, God created man with leg to walk, to walk. Praise God. May you never have problem. Ah, you are sleeping. May you never have problem. You remember during 1993, during Abiola crisis. Ah, you did not walk. Maybe it met you in your house. People from New Garage, they trek to Bodija. They trek everywhere. Because you have to you have to run for your life. You have to escape for your life. But why is it that it is when we don't want to die that we want to use our leg? <laughs> Praise God. When there is a danger, you know how to run. But when things are easy, ah, I can't walk. Oh. I can't walk. Oh. I can't walk. Oh. Ah, my leg is spinning me. Ah, how can I walk from Songo to this place when I did not kill Jesus? Ah, hey, you are in trouble. Because your legs, don't pity yourself. I don't have money. Trek to church. And when you now get to church, pray God, I am trekking to church you, to go back home, provide for me. Hallelujah. And if Jesus did not answer that prayer because he wanted to trek back, trek back home, he gave you leg to trek. He gave you hand to collect. Am I talking? Praise God. He gave you high to see. This leg is to walk. Shout hallelujah. Because this time around, bread and butter Christianity will not help anybody. Because the Bible says, when Jesus is to come, there shall be falling away first. It says so many people will fall away from the faith. Many people will depart from the faith. Many people will go back to the world. May that not that may not that not be you in Jesus' name. It is a prophecy. It's going to happen. When Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, it has been prophesied somebody is going to betray Jesus, but they did not put the name of Judas Iscariot there. Hello. The Bible says the offense. Jesus said the offense cannot but come, but woe is unto that person. Through whom offense cometh. Hallelujah. You are the one that you are not going to allow you, the devil to use you as a scapegoat. Judas allowed himself because of covetousness. He never knew Jesus would just die like that. No. He just wanted to make fast money. Anytime you want to make quick money, be careful. Let me compromise. Let me make the money. Be careful. Because you wouldn't know whether is the last chance that thing has to happen eh? but they didn't put the name of anybody may you not be the one that will carry out that evil agenda Amen. somebody hearing me he just thought that let me just make money he never and he did not spend that money the 30 pieces of silver we said don't worry eh? you don't know him eh? when we are going like this 12 apostles, you know, with the master Jesus. You don't know any one of us because you will not see Jesus as being praise God. The same dry way of dressing, the same calmness, the same gentleness. And that's why I always ask pastors the kind of gara 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 that you see today. Eh? The kind of the protocol that now a pastor is coming out. Praise God. Tell those two people, go, to the, go and sit down there. Two of you, go and sit down there. Hallelujah. Because now, somebody is going on. Because somebody is a pastor, you will see people with black shades. Are you following me? You see two, we see people with black shades. Eh? Security. A pastor. They said they are protocol officer. They are protocol officer. You will not see that one in Jesus. They did not differentiate. They could not differentiate. And that's why they needed. They needed somebody to point Jesus out. And uh, Judas Iscariot felt that this is a uh, 
Jesus. What is the most great mercy they brought? Say this Jesus. Because there are times they wanted to arrest Jesus, they could not arrest him. They wanted he was on the cliff. One fetch Jesus Jabolori okay. Eh? Shama. Come on, Tade by confetti. Shuma koke o ti to eh Jesus comes to eh ya go for me. Jesus de kojala are you get my point now? One day any tefeti. Oh, they can go for me. As you go for then Lord, praise God. It was just, just what they could not do anything. Hey, Amen. That is that. But he thought that eh, I know my master. Who wants to arrest him? Go and try it. Let me just make this cheap money. All right, let's negotiate. Thirty pieces of silver, cash. I don't want transfer. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. It is cash that I want. And they counted 30 pieces of silver. It's a lot of money in those days. Silver. Not bronze. They counted 30 pieces of silver. They gave it to him. He said, don't worry. Come as so and so and so. Time. He, will, he will be in the garden of Gethsemane. I know. We know his schedule of prayer. He will be. That is where I go to see him. And Judas brought them. Shout hallelujah. The Lord will help us. Do you know the first thing Peter did? He could not point to Jesus. But he has given them a sign. Whosoever I kiss. Kissing is a symbol of love. Three of us. He now went to Jesus. And said, Hail master. He kissed Jesus. And Jesus said, do you betray the son of man with a kiss? Are you betraying me with a kiss? These are the things that happened before he was crucified. Now, are you still betraying your fellow brother with a kiss? There are people today that you criticize, you backbite, you slander. But when he says, hey, Sister Lord, God bless you, you are betraying with a kiss? After you have spoiled him, you have pushed him outside to be useless. I say he's a useless person. But in the secret, now, when it is you and you, you say, ah, thank God for your life. Oh, Sister Lagwaja, you are the best. Betrayer. Relation of Judas Iscariot. And he betrayed Jesus. And they, and, and they took Jesus. But he was expecting Jesus to disappear. He was expecting Jesus to do the way he has been doing before. He did not know it was the hand of his ministry. I am telling you today what is happening in our world is the hand time. And that's why you must be very, very careful at this time. Shout hallelujah. So when he now knew that Jesus did not disappear, Jesus did not do anything. What did he do? Ah, they arrested Jesus. He was taken to the uh, judgment hall. He was now being beaten. Eh? He took that money. He went back to the high priest. Is that not in your Bible? He said, You have made me to sin against the sinless person. I regret what I have done. Take your money. Do you know the money you are pursuing all around is not as important, you know, you know, more important more than your salvation? Do you know that that money you think you are looking is not as important, you know, as your relationship with God? Do you know that that money is not as important as your future? The future that lies ahead of you. The money you collect. There are pastors now during the last election who collected money. Sure, they will not finish spending it. They collect money. Some of them also, you know, they turn the church to campaign grand. Maybe they have done it now. Maybe it is finished. <laughs> Praise God. Whether they are candidate to win or they are candidate did not to win. Nigeria continues. Shout hallelujah. He returned the money. Do you know what they said? They said, that is your problem. See to that. The guilt in your heart the body in your heart, we are not bothered about that. It is your headache. We have paid for what we wanted you to do. May somebody not use you against your conscience. Your amen is weak. It's suspicious. 
I said, may somebody not use you against your salvation. I pray for you. May you not be used against the will of God. Is that see to that? What concerns us? And he dropped the money. And the priest, the high priest of them said, oh, oh you, this money, we can't spend it for God again. No. It has become the money of blood. That money is not ordinary money again. The money is already stained. Many money that you collect today, those who collect money because for kidnapping money is a money of blood. Those who collect money, you know, as a rob robbery is what? Money of blood. Those who collect money in order to destroy another person, they say it is a business tactics, it is a money of blood. Now, they knew that that money, it was from the temple they gave it to him. Oh. But returning that money to the temple, they knew that the status of that money, you know, as what? Has changed. That it is no longer what? A money that is befitting to the temple. They said it's a money of blood. And so, they now took the money. They said, we can't put it in the temple. Kill our man, fish. What are we going to use it for? They now used to go and buy land. Iberia Grand. Okay, no problem. Let the temple also have a project. Iberia Grand. Abi, Symmetry. They said, let's be, let's be burying strangers there. Be careful of your action. We are in the end time. All that Israel is doing is part of the it. Eats. The church will be persecuted. It is part of it in this end time. And that is why take your faith serious. Shout hallelujah. Don't wait for somebody to visit you before you come to church. Don't give excuse and eh? they don't look at me. They don't, I am hungry. I don't have money. I've not eaten since when that's why I don't come to church. It will not help you. When you come to the presence of God, the Bible says in the presence of God there is what? Fullness of joy. And at the right hand of God there are players forevermore. At the presence of God there is what? Fullness, full joy in the house of the Lord. So that you are here today, there is an anointing of joy coming upon your life. There is, there is a favor that is, your, is attracted upon your life. You may not see it because there is no money in your pocket, but the anointing is not visible. But the anointing works in your life. And that is why because you are here, you know when we are close and say, as we go this week, let the door be open. We are not just praying empty prayers. We are praying according to the covenant of God. All right? He said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you come to church, don't look morose. Don't tighten your face. Be happy. Forget about what whatever is around there. Concentrate on God. And when you are going, the Bible says in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And the right hand of God that are pleasure forevermore. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So as you come to church, as you are going back, you are not the same person that came in. Somebody getting it? You are not the same person that came in. The work of God has happened in your life. You may not be sick, but because everybody that come to the presence of God have needs in their lives. Those needs are met. The anointing is working upon your life. The grace of God is multiplied because you are in his presence. The glory of God tabernacle upon your life. And if you take it serious and you believe that, yes, I have come to meet the Lord, as you step out, that week will be different. And I say this week will be different. This week you will possess your possession. Because our Jesus triumphantly entered into Jerusalem. And of course, look at the person they are looking to kill. You. He entered into the temple. He is not the ogre of the temple. He is not in charge of the temple. You understand now? But he, he entered into the temple and said, What? You are selling doves in the church. Get out. Beat them out. Money changers. Money doublers. Can you see what they have turned the church to? And it's happening also today. Church has become so many things. Eh? Church is more of a money, money exchange. Eh? Praise God. I don't want to mention the company of our people. Hallelujah. 
The church has become a place of trading money. Eh? People go give money this, do this, and things like that. And people have forgotten the God they have come to do what to serve. Competition. Clothing competition. Latest fashion and all those kind of rubbish. That is what the church had been turned to. It was like that in the temple. That they could now multiple changes, people selling doves, and people will carry pots of water. They don't, it's just like somebody is going to this place, and they, you know, you cannot take this place, you will take inside the church eh, to escape the other side. Eh, praise God. And all those things. A lot of rubbish. And Jesus said, My house, it is written, shall be called the house of prayers, but you have turned it to what? The den of thieves. That is a serious matter. Many churches, many temples have been turned to den of thieves. The pastor himself is a thief. People in that place, they are thieves. They may not carry gun, but anything that you are saying, any way of making money on in an unrighteous way, that person is what? Talk to me is what? It's a thief. He drove them out. And they were looking at him. They could not stop him. That is the triumphant anointing. He came in triumphantly as a victor. You don't stop a victor. Hallelujah. He came in. He came in in that order. He drove them out. And they began to, began to look at him. And they said. Those who could still have little bit of knowledge. They said. Ah. It is written, somebody is going to come. Oh. Yes, the zeal of the house of the Lord has what? Has consumed me. It is zeal. It's doing it zeal. Hallelujah. Victorious entrance to bring sanity. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The triumphant anointing come upon your life. In that business, in that career, from today you will enter there you begin to put things right you begin to correct the abnormalities that is what the church is supposed to be we are to correct things that are wrong that is what we are supposed to be by their power by the anointing of triumphant entry hallelujah what are the significance some of the significance of the story you can see that the story of the uh, Jesus riding to Jerusalem, it reveals the humble nature of the Messiah. Praise God. He said, meek. According to that, your king sitting meek, you know, sitting on an ass. It reminds us also of the selfless love of Christ by laying down his life for us because it was a journey to Calvary. Praise God. That is when we are talking about Passion Week, we are reflecting on is number one, the selfless love of Christ. Then number two, we are also thinking about how the humble nature of the Messiah. Number three, the triumphant entry also signify ruling in the midst of your foes. The triumphant entry of the king is ruling in the midst of what? Of your foes. You know, you have said that you will really rule in the midst of your foes. In the midst of your enemy. Hallelujah. Now, that is it. There is anointing upon you know, a child of God who is connected to Christ. Jesus was a bold person throughout his life on earth. He was bold. He would confront situation. And that's why he rode triumphantly and people were shouting to the God's praise in his life. Now, you see, he ruled. So this week, this thing is to remind you that you are going out there not as a defeated person, but as what? As a winner. That you are going to rule in the midst of your enemies. Everything that you are asked not to do, you begin to do in the name of Jesus Christ. The number four, he demonstrated his rulership as king of kings and lord of lords. That he is the king of kings. The triumphant entry is the lord of lords. He is the king of kings. And number five, it was Jesus' first step towards his death. The significance of the Passion Week of that entry is the first step towards his death. As you know that 
when we come to when we when, when the, the, the week when it is friday now we talk about the crucifixion of jesus is that not so and sunday we talk about his resurrection triumphant entry of christ now that is the entry of jesus to jerusalem i said everything that jesus did there is a lot of lesson to learn from may i remind you before we pray there is another triumphant entry of jesus as he has gone he's coming back praise god he's coming back in the same grand style how do i know look at revelation chapter 19 revelation chapter 19 verses 11 revelation 19 verses 11 to 16 are you there and i saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war the next verse his eyes were as flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself verse 13 and he was clothed with a vesture deep in blood and his name is called the word of god to the next verse called the word of god and the armies which were in heaven followed him praise god another triumphant entry when jesus is coming to reign on earth for 1000 years not at the time of the rapture now after the rapture there is coming to reign for 1000 years on earth and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine lining white and clean verse 15 and out of his mouth that is jesus mouth great a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treaded the wine press of the fierceness of his wrath of the almighty the last verse there praise god and he had on his vesture and on his tie a name written what is it king of kings and lord of lords hallelujah i say hallelujah quickly let me just tidy up to tell you the, you know the background of the story now jesus christ when he entered triumphantry talking about the triumphant king now that was that led you know eventually for him to be our messiah to die praise god and he rose to heaven now we are expecting jesus now at the rapture what the church is expecting is the appearance of jesus not how i shall see him this is that time it's not the rapture at the time of the rapture the bible said the trumpet shall sound it's only those who are in christ that will hear the trumpet and they will be caught to the sky and they will disappear and according to the bible teachings we will be in heaven with jesus for seven years during those seven years antichrist will have taken over the reign of the earth he will have his free day those who miss the rapture will be more persecuted it is called the time of great tribulation now all those things will be going on for a period of seven years but by the time he will be coming this second triumphant entry that i'm talking about is what we are reading here he will be coming as a warrior as a man of war he will be coming you know as a commander in chief that he is praise god the bible that said that angels of war they will follow him he rode on an ass to jerusalem is coming with white horse praise god and at his coming angels on white horses will follow him because by that time there is a battle that will be said called the battle of armageddon i know you must have heard that from jehovah witness though they confuse you praise god <laughs> hallelujah there is a battle called the battle of armageddon because you know when we went to uh, jerusalem you know 2000 and what now 2009 they show us where that battle will take place you know it's a, it, the month is called mount megiddo all right megiddo that is why the year of Armageddon, the battle is called the battle of Armageddon. Now, because by that time, it is, it is a, you know, 
towards Israel. This same Israel, they will revolt. Their eyes will now open. After the first three and a half years, when the Antichrist takes over, they will believe that is the Messiah they are expecting. But later, when they see more atrocities of the Antichrist, they will now see that, ah, they have missed it. They will now remember it is that Jesus, that they are Messiah. Alright? Now, they will now fade. The whole world army will gather together to attack Israel. That is the world called the Battle of the Armageddon. Praise God. That is the war that all the armies of the world, they will gather together. It is now the whole world against Israel. And what they wanted to do long time that they could not do is to wipe out Israel from the map of the world. But that day, that time, that is exactly what they wanted to do. That now these people, they are like a pestilence. Let's kill them. Exterminate them once and for all. That is what that battle is targeting. All the soldiers, all the weapons that have not been used before, all of them were there. And of course, the Antichrist himself will be the, the, the commander, you know, that will be on the battlefield. And all his, uh, 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 and all his supporters, they will be there. At that particular point, they think they will press the trigger to wipe out Israel. That scripture we read. It will come, hallelujah, in a white horse. And soldiers of heaven will follow him. The Bible says, the sword that coming from his mouth will kill the Antichrist. Not because he's the word. The word is a sword, hallelujah. Everything he says begin to come to pass. The Bible says, if you look, we are good going to look at you know you know revelation deeply at another time now maybe in the bible study but god have mercy on you you don't come for bible study how do you want to know you want me to teach the, the eschatological studies on sunday it's not possible but come for bible study if not come for bible study but i pray god will revive you i say god will revive the church it is in bible study you teach some of these things now Jesus now, when he now comes, now he will come and the Bible says he will kill the Antichrist. It has been prophesied also that there will be a, 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 a call. All you, you know, beasts of the field, come and, come and eat. All you birds of the air, come and feed on the body of kings, on the body of soldiers. Hallelujah. That is how it should be. And the Bible now says at that time, Satan that is deceiving them, that is causing all the katakata in the world, you know, he will now be bound. Satan will now be thrown with shame and be thrown into bottomless pits. Because Jesus wants to reign on her, there must be peace. Christi jobare de ki ashere bere for pa re for now he says we have read all those things there he tells us that he shall um we were reading revelation chapter 19 you look at it verse 11 i said verse 12 his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was called clothed with a vessel deep in blood. You can be sure that it's for war. He came first as a savior. He's coming again as a judge. We are appealing to you. Give your life to Jesus. People can rubbish Jesus. Can say anything against Jesus. Nothing will happen. You can do whatever you like because it's now he came as a savior but he's coming as a judge. He's coming as a warrior. He's coming for vengeance. Yeah, he's coming for vengeance. He said his garment is deep in blood. It is not, it is not for play. Hallelujah. And his name is called the word of God. He was introduced there again. And the armies that were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fire linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth went a sharp sword. And with it, he shall smite the nations. And he shall rule them, what? With the rod of iron. And he treaded the wine spreads of the first things of God's anger. Hallelujah. And he said that they found his name, verse when they saw him clearly, it's written, This is the King of Kings. 
this is the Lord of Lords. The second triumphant entry of Jesus to the earth, hallelujah, is going to be with judgment. And he's going to establish his government on earth for 1,000 years. It is called the millennial reign of Christ. There will be peace everywhere. He will rule. He will reign. And all the saints that have followed him we come back. Those that have been raptured, we come. And for what you are doing for God here will determine your position in that millennial range. Is somebody hearing me? Because the Bible says you will choose some people to be in charge of some nations. It is not because I'm American. No, by that time, it can be somebody from Ghana. Go and rule over America. You are the president of America now. Amen. Because Jesus will be the world you know, leader then. Okay? Now, that is it. And there will be center of government. And that's why you see, I will not forget, you know, that, uh, that man of God, S.G. Elton, you know, that missionary who came in 1930 to Nigeria, you know, who labored here. He was the father of the Pentecostalism in Nigeria and of course died in Nigeria. He said, Elisha was where he was. He did all the, I mean, in ministry. He said they should not take him anywhere. He said the Lord told him that Elisha would be one of the center of government during the time of the millennial reign. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't worry. You are welcome to Ijesha then. Amen. Those who want to change to Ijesha then. You don't even need it then. Praise God. Now, you're going to be one of the center of government. Because that land. People have labored in that land. Am I right? God has made himself known in that land. Many preachers have been raised in that land. Amen. And so, he's going to be one of the center of government. So, he wants his body to be entered there. And his body is entered there. The only child that she brought in that was about four or five years old when he came to Nigeria then with his wife, Mama Ruth is about uh, Mama Ruth is about 83 or something years of old now. That woman did not marry. She's been a missionary to Kaduna, to Kogi, working labor all her life until her old. She's back into the, into the base of his father, of her father right now in Elisha. That's where she is. Just consulting people come to see her. Now, she wants also to be buried in Elisha. Shout hallelujah. The Bible is true. I'm saying all this, it is true. We are telling you all this, thing. it is the Bible that says it is true. Is somebody hearing me? Make sure you give your life to Jesus. Make sure you open yourself for the grace to live a triumphant life. Our Jesus is a triumphant king. We also we are triumphant church. Praise God. You know, we are the triumphant church because our Lord is the triumphant king. Somebody hearing me? So, at the second coming, all this thing will happen. Oh, the world, the stage is set for it. Things are happening. Nothing will be settled. As they are, you know, you don't know what the Bible says. The Bible says, when they shall say peace, 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 sudden destruction will fall upon them. When they say they want to solve this world problem, another one will erupt. Because until everybody begins to align to the Son of God, to Jesus, they cannot have peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Giver of Peace. There is no peace. America cannot give you peace. They have their troubles. You see the way some of these countries, the way flood, the way hurricane, what do you call it again? Tornado, a lot of that disaster is killing them, is destroying them. There is no way that is safe. But when you are in Jesus, you have your peace in Christ. Hallelujah. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming back again. The second triumphant entry is coming. It's coming. Less is coming. But by that time that it's coming, it's not coming for you. He's coming to judge people on half. Are you following me now? Because you will be coming with him. Those who have been raptured will be coming with him. So we are going to come with him. Hallelujah. The angels of war, they will dare go ahead to clear the ground. To, sub so, to subdue everybody. And people that remain on the heart that did not go with the rapture, they will be dying one by one for that 1,000 years. Praise God. We need that 1,000 years. That is the people that will come for the judgment. 
you know, the, 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 the white throne judgment. It was after that 1,000 years, judgment seats will now be raised for people to be judged. You understand now? That's why the Bible says, blessed are those who are partaker of the first resurrection. Somebody hearing me? Say, because the second resurrection will not have part upon them. Hello? Because those who now died after the rapture, when Jesus came, they will be killed. I mean, when he came to reign, and they are dying, who have received the mark of the beast, they are doomed forever. They will die. By the time they will wake up, they are waking up for judgment. Because they are, their hand has been sealed. But by the time Jesus is ruling, they will be there. And what will be like, be like see, hallelujah. The priests we are talking about, they will now see it then. But sorry. They are not parts of that calculation. But for those who are members of the church, what do we need to do? Open your heart. Let allow God. Let's wake up. I want us to go out, bring people to come and hear the truth. Let's do everything. Your friends are going to hell. Draw them. Call them. Some people are tired of church. Tell them that come. Come and try a church. If you are not blessed, you can go. But let them come and hear. He said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. When you are doing that, you also, you are writing, you are crediting your account in heaven. When you bring somebody to church, when you preach the gospel, you, when you labor and you are serving God, you do everything necessary to serve God, you are crediting your account in heaven. It will determine where will you rule and reign. Shall we rise up to pray? Triumphant life is a victorious life. As a member of the church, you are due for victorious living. You are due for victorious living. You are due for victorious living. I want you to pray this morning. Tell the Lord God Almighty, here is my life. I give my life to you. Lord, don't let me miss the rapture. Prepare me, O oh God. Our Lord Jesus Christ is coming with the second triumphant entry to come and judge the world. Close your eyes. Tell the Lord. Just simple. See, Jesus, I can see that I need you in my life. Just have mercy upon me. All these things that I've had, I don't want to be guilty on the last day. Come into my heart. I surrender my life to you. I will serve you with all my life. Oh, I am born again 10 years, 20 years. Let's, let's rededicate our life. Let's tell God that God, revive me again. Lord, bring me back to the track where I am missing it. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. All this truth that I will not be guilty at the last day. May I not sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. May I not betray my master. May I not betray another Christian because of gain of this world. Tell the Lord that God Almighty help me to live for you. To read for you. To serve you. To serve you. To serve you. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. Prepare me for the rapture. When the trumpet shall sound, Lord, I'm ready to fly with you. That I will not miss it. 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 Whatever is in my life that will make you to miss it, Lord, deliver me now. Break every yoke. Break every yoke. Break every yoke. And the last prayer is that you are to live a triumphant life. So this week I step out triumphantly to possess the land, to conquer the land, to demonstrate Christ's authority over every situation of life. Every situation must bow for me. 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 In the name of Jesus. Every situation must bow for me. In the name of Jesus.
Tell the Lord God Almighty, I dedicate my heart to you. You are not coming for Bible study. What are you doing? You don't come to church regularly. Where are you? We are in the end time. When others are gathering God's presence, where are you? It is this place, presence of God, we can get strength. We can get encouragement. But where are you? And that's why I say I'm tired because you are not in God's presence. Where we receive fullness of joy. Where we are renewed. Where we are encouraged. Because there are troubles in the world. There are troubles in the world. There are challenges in the world. We are only saved inside Christ Jesus. And the level of knowledge of the word of God we have. Will determine what our life is going to be. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Lord this morning we come. We ask Lord Jehovah you accept us. As many that are desirous to turn their life over to you. They're asking for forgiveness of sins. Even those of us that are believers that we know that we have one sin or the other. One, one carnality or other in our lives. Father, we confess our sins. Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we have come far with you. We don't want to be destroyed with this world. Father, I pray God in the areas of our weaknesses, our disobedience, Lord, forgive us in Jesus' name. Everything you are demanding from us, give us grace, O oh Lord, to be able to walk in it, in the light of your word, in the name of Jesus. Those that are giving their life to Christ for the first time, Lord Jesus, come into their hearts, rule and reign in their lives, in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God Almighty, that God, that you prepare us for the rapture. That by the time Jesus will appear, we will be raptured with him. That nothing will take, will, 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 will take us away. Nothing will hold us back in the name of Jesus. And we are talking about the second triumphant entry. When Jesus will be coming as a judge, as a warrior. Lord God Almighty, to judge people and their wickedness in this world. I pray God we shall not be here then. We shall be part of people that will come with the Lord. To reign on earth with him in Jesus name. Lastly Lord I want to pray. We are saying triumphant entry is a triumphant. Is an evidence of triumphant life. I pray for your people Lord Jehovah God. That this week O oh Lord. They will live triumphantly. They will walk triumphantly. They will be champion. They will be victors. Over every situation in the name of Jesus. Everything that tried to close their mouth shut. Father, Lord Jehovah God, you will create a shout. Your glory shall, shall be made manifest in their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, you will use everybody as a light to put an end to the darkness of this world in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We receive your love. We receive your blessings. We receive lifting. For those who are discouraged, receive encouragement. Because when God presents, let the oil pour upon you. The oil of joy instead of heaviness. Receive in the name of Jesus. Glory be to the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen.